Got him. And I think I'm going to survive Suwannee County. God bless you all. <laughs> well, one thing is certain. Nobody is going to be breaking into Baron Von Uhl's house anytime soon. We'll be right back. Here's what's coming up on the next Inside Edition. He is a Hollywood superstar, but some people in this town are not big fans. Robert Redford is involved in a drawn-out battle to save a canyon near his Sundance Resort, but the town is fighting back. They have to be held somewhat responsible. What is it about this windy Utah road that has pitted neighbor against movie star? The Sundance Kid is facing dangerous curves. Well, that's it for us. Thank you for watching. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We'll see you again tomorrow. While on location, production staff may stay at Best Western, the world's largest lodging chain with over 3,300 places to stay worldwide. Best Western. Well, the always apparent Zsa Zsa Gabor gets sentenced this week. Most people feel she will not go to jail, but will have to pay a fine and do some community service. Zsa Zsa's predicament reminds us that other celebrities have actually gone to jail. According to the Celebrity Almanac, the following people have spent at least one day in the slammer. Johnny Cash, Stacey Keach, Sean Penn, Paul McCartney, James Brown, still in there, Sophia Loren, Robert Mitchum, and... May West. May West? We just thought you'd like to know. And here's what's coming up on the next Inside Edition. A 10-year-old girl was killed by a drunk driver. We believe that she never knew what hit her. The driver had five prior convictions and had killed two other people. But he had connections. His father was a lieutenant on the police force. I begged the father, 10 years ago, to please take his license away. After his mother's death, this man had pleaded with police, but they did not listen. Was it a cover-up that ended in the death of a young girl? A very troubling report tomorrow. Well, before we leave you today, we would like to talk baseball. It is World Series time, and who better to explain just what is going on than Abbott and Costello. Hit it, Bud and Lou. How do you, how do you like my wall club, Lou? Hey, all those people going to be at the game today? Certainly. Oh, this is going to be a whopper of a game. Well, it should be. Hey, yeah, but I understand they made you the manager of this here baseball team. Why not? So you're the manager? I'm the manager. Well, you know, I'd like to know some of the guys' names on the team, so when I meet them on the street or in the ballpark, I'll be able to say hello to those people. Why, sure, I'll introduce you to the boys. They give them funny names, though, Lou. Oh, I know they get those ball players off of funny names. Let's see, on the team we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You the manager? Yes. You know the guys' names? I should. Well, then tell me the guys' names. I say who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. You the manager? And then yes. You know the guys' names? I'm telling you their names. Well, who's on first? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The guy playing first base. Who? The guy on first. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I'm asking you. <laughs> I'm telling you. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm asking you who's on first. That's it. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy at first base. That's his name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? <laughs> I'm asking you who's on first. That's it. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. That's it. What's the guy's name on first? Now, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm asking you no, who's on minute. first. Don't, don't change the phrase. I'm not changing nobody. I ask you a simple question. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. Now, we're not he... talking about him. <laughs> Look, you got a first baseman? Yes. Then tell me the fella's name playing first. Who? The guy playing first. That's his name. Wait, what's the guy's name on first base? Why is the guy's name on second base? Who's playing second? Who's playing first? I don't know. He's on third base. <laughs> Abbott and Costello are in the Baseball Hall of Fame because of that routine. That's it for us. Thank you for watching. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We'll see you again tomorrow. you got to pay the money to somebody on first base, are you? Does he give you a receipt? Sure. How does he sign the receipt? Who? The guy that you give the money to. Who? The guy you give the money to. That's how he signs it. That's how who signs it. Yeah. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who. Yeah. When you give the guy the money, don't he have to sign the receipt? He does. Well, how does he sign his name? Who? The guy you give the money to. You, you dope!
Bayonet. You just don't give money to somebody without them giving you a receipt? The whole side of it. What do you have to give me? Come on. I'm telling you. Well, go ahead. Tell me. What's the guy's name that signs the receipt on first Wait a minute. What signs his own receipt? Who signs his own receipt? No, who signs his? I'm asking you, when the guy on first base gives you a piece of paper, he puts his name on it. So who puts his name on it? How does the fellow's name on first base look to you when he signs his name? Who? To you. That's how it looks. How does it look to you? Who? To you. Who? To you. Who? When the guy signs his name, how does it look to you? That's how it looks. How? Who? Who? I'm asking you, what's the guy's name on first base to give the money to? Who? While on location, production staff may stay at Best Western. With 1,900 hotels, motor inns, and resorts in the USA and Canada, you'll find the right place at the right price. The letters this week are wild, to say the least. About our story on hate groups using cable TV and radio to broadcast their message came this from California. Mr. Bill O'Reilly, it's nice to see another white race traitor on the television. We will gas you first. That note was unsigned. About our story on Huey Newton's alleged criminal deeds, this from Harvard. White racism remains. Yet again, an African-American hero and role model is brought down. We receive many letters on our story about rock stars going deaf because of loud music, including this one from a member of Willie Nelson's band. After a hearing evaluation, I am having special earplugs made. Your show made me aware to save what's left of my hearing. Some people were upset over our look at high school seniors who had trouble answering questions like, who is the leader of the Third Reich? President Bush wants to be the education president, but it is we of the nation who must see to it that our children learn. And finally, a nice letter from Missouri. Never before have I written to a TV show, but Inside Edition deserves to be complimented for events covered and excellent presentation. If you would like to write to us, the address is Inside Edition, Post Office Box 20075, Cherokee Station, New York, New York, 10028-0050. Lots of zeros. And we would like to hear from you. Here's what's coming up on the next Inside Edition. A four-month-old child was found abandoned, but he was saved, raised by foster parents to be a bright, happy two-year-old. We were the only mommy and daddy he had. Then a state agency returned him to his natural parents. That was the last look I had of Bradley McGee. Now, two-year-old Bradley McGee is dead. It is a case of social work that didn't work. That's tomorrow. And that is it for us today. Thank you for watching. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We will see you again next time. While on location, production staff may stay at Best Western, the world's largest lodging chain with over 3,300 places to stay worldwide. Best Western. Folks like you and me, who are fighting to make it back from disaster. Here's Cynthia Allison. At first glance, it doesn't seem as bad as it really is. But what you are looking at is a lifetime full of memories. Michael and Mary Beto and their four sons live in this house. Live there, that is, until 5.05 last Tuesday. Mom said, get out of the house, get out of the house, get this quick. I just ran behind the couch and duck in covered and i kept telling him to get out of the house and asking where's the baby where's the baby perched high over a roaring river in the santa cruz mountains the beto's house shook and rocked for 15 terrifying seconds when it was finally over they found that the baby had tripped and scratched his face but there were no serious injuries it took michael an hour to get home to his family i had about a million things were going through my mind as i was driving home, uh, wondering if the roads were going to be open, wondering if the, the house slid into the river. The house has belonged to the Beto's family for generations. Mary and Michael were married here in the living room and have watched their dreams grow with their children. 
The day after their home and their lives were shaken to the core, they returned to shoot these home movies. This is where I was when the quake hit. Now, a few days after the disaster, they show us the damage. I think for repairs, the whole thing is going to have to come down. See how loose that is. The kitchen is in shambles. Broken glass crunches underfoot. The shelves tip their contents. Knives and dishes are everywhere. Upstairs, the kids' room looks, well, as though an earthquake hit it. Cracks run through nearly every wall. The hearth is split down the middle. Children's toys and treasured family possessions are broken and scattered throughout. My main fears are that the house may not be completely stable that there's damage that we're not qualified to assess, you know. A new concern develops. Heavy rains are causing the river to rise, perhaps weakening an already shaky foundation. The bright spot of the day occurs as the family cat, missing since the earthquake, shows up hungry. Just found the kitty. Just no, came back. The Beddows are living in a motel room until their home is repaired. Yes, I was wondering when the soonest I can get an inspector out to my property. Although the continuing aftershocks keep the family on edge, Mary and Michael are hanging on, pulling together. It can get very tense having six people in one tiny room. and I think it just makes the basic day-to-day -day survival things a, a little harder. They don't know when they'll be able to return home. Schools are closed indefinitely. Michael is on an unpaid leave of absence from work. He doesn't want to return until his family is settled. But money is becoming scarce. Still, the Beddows know that all things considered, they were spared the full wrath of the earthquake. Mary, still shaken from a recent tremor, says she's found out what's really important. I'm just so glad that my family is okay. And I don't care what is broken, and I don't care what I won't have about what I won't have anymore. All I care about is that my family is together, and they're safe, and that they'll be okay because they are the only things that you cannot replace and each one of those kids and my husband is the most important thing in my life we'll be checking in with the Beddoes family in the weeks ahead to follow their progress as they rebuild their lives and if you would like to help victims of the earthquake you can call the red cross at 1-800-453-9000 and here's what's coming up on the next inside edition she was in a bitter battle with the courts to avenge her mother's murder, but a technicality prevailed, and she couldn't live with the verdict. The callousness took away the last shred of anything that she had to believe in. It was a murder trial that began and ended in death. Well, that's it for us today. Thank you for watching. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We'll see you again tomorrow. While on location, production staff may stay at Best Western, the world's largest lodging chain with over 3,300 places to stay worldwide. Best Western. There are new developments in two of the stories we have recently brought you. Two weeks ago, we told you about Washington, D.C. police officer Dana Harwood, who died during a rescue operation on the Potomac River. His death inspired the daughter of the victim Harwood was searching for. She became a Washington police officer. Well, the mayor's office in D.C. saw our report and decided to award Officer Harwood's mother the remainder of his pension, almost $1,000. They had been holding the money for the last 17 years. And last January, we were in Miami during the riots that broke out there just before the Super Bowl. This week, the police officer who killed a black motorcyclist and may have sparked the riot went on trial. He is charged with two counts of manslaughter for killing the driver and a passenger. The slayings touched off burning and looting in predominantly black neighborhoods. One person was killed and 11 were wounded. And here's what's coming up on the next Inside Edition. There may be a dark side to this city of lights. No, the public will never get to see it. Uh, because if public sentiment says that they don't want to see it, that's fine with me.
It lies in the back room of this casino, and some say it is the owner's true passion. Jewish leaders call it a Nazi monument, but he says it's an important collection of history. Is it a game of racist roulette? Well, that's it for today. Thank you for watching us. I'm Bill O'Reilly. See you again tomorrow. While on location, production staff may stay at Best Western, the world's largest lodging chain with over 3,300 places to stay worldwide. Best Western. <laughs>